Hey guys, Ben from Snowboard Gamer. Welcome to episode 24 of This Week in Board Games. In this weekly segment, I go over all the games that we played last week, go over any interesting board game news, and show any new purchases. Lately, I've been giving weekly updates on the board game room, but with all the holidays, we didn't make any progress on the board game room. I'm going to start with my new purchases this week, actually, which I did not buy any new board games. I got plenty for Christmas that I still haven't played yet. This is not a board game, but this is an upgrade to my channel here. This is an Audio-Technica lapel microphone here. I am going to go plug it in now and let's see how different it sounds. Okay, there. How does that sound? Can you tell the difference? I'm excited to see how this turns out. I've gotten some feedback on my channel, which I appreciate all feedback, good and bad. I've actually had several comments where people said, dude, great videos, get a mic. So I finally went out and invested in a decent lapel microphone. I hope it's decent at least, we shall see. This week we were able to play Scythe along with the brand new Wind Gambit expansion. It adds airships in a resolution module with alternate endings to the game. For example, everyone gets 20 turns and whoever has the most money after 20 turns wins. Or whoever places the six star, you count up all the money and if the person who places six star does not win, then everyone gets one more turn. Some interesting ways to end the game. We just finished Scythe with the Wind Gambit expansion. What'd you think, Ethan? I've got to say that the, the ships, it really helps you develop the board early on in the game. And then I think it really comes down to how it shuffles out for the attack and defensive airship cards. But I, I liked it a lot. It didn't change the game dramatically though. It just kind of helped get it going faster. I think it actually makes for a shorter game, which I liked. Yeah, it played great with two people. So huge fan of that. We just played with the airship module. I'm excited to try the resolution modules as well next time we play. The next two games we played are Cosmic Run and Las Vegas. These are our two favorite dice rolling games as of late. They're both around 20 bucks. They're similar type games. You re-roll dice, and, but you have decisions to make. In Las Vegas, you're placing the dice on one of six different casinos based on the dice that you roll. Cosmic Run, you're placing them on one of five different planets trying to race to the top of the planet. They're both really fun games for ages eight and up, play in 20 to 30 minutes. This one's out of print, but Las Vegas is 20 bucks and the easiest way to get it is over at Target. They did a reprint that's in a black box and it's just called Vegas, but it's the same game. We're really digging these dice games lately. They're quick, they're easy, they're fun. They can play any ages, eight to, we played with, uh, someone in their 70s this week and it was really fun. Well, I got the replacement 3D printer. We're running the test print here and let's hope it doesn't mess up and poke a hole in the bed like the first one did. We let the test print run overnight and it was done when we got up in the morning. Oh cool, the base just comes off. Oh look, it's hollow on the inside. That's so cool. We have our first real 3D print uh, outside of the test one that we made. Kinsey wanted to make this keychain with gears. There's this piece and then there's two gears and they fit together. So pretty much you just pop them in. And then... <gasps> That's so cool. We're playing Terraforming Mars with the Venus Next expansion. Travis is the one who's really going all in on the Venus strategy. What do you think, Travis? I actually really like it. The floaters is cool. All the cards that do floaters, they um, benefit other cards. So most cards will be like add floaters to a different card and then you can use those floaters to do like add floaters then immediately do the action in the same turn. I 3D printed some pieces for Terraforming Mars and I'm gonna show you these now. So the first thing I 3D printed is the oxygen, which is pretty cool. I haven't painted it yet and it kept falling over. So we put a couple of metal washers on the bottom and hot glued them there and it seems to stay up now. This is a thermometer and this is the terraforming tracker, which I'm not wild about. It shows a family and it's corporations racing to terraform Mars, but that's what they had on Thingiverse, which is the website where we get all the 3D printing plans. For first player, instead of the round token, we printed this astronaut and he's giant. I'm really digging this 3D printer so far. I can tell we're gonna be making a lot of things in the future with it. 
On New Year's Eve, we went to a party at one of our friends' houses, and we played quite a few games there. Eric brought Wits and Wagers, the Las Vegas edition. This game goes from four players up to however many you want. It's a trivia game, but you don't have to be good at trivia in order to win the game. You place bets on who you think got the right answer, and so it adds an extra element to a trivia game that's really fascinating, and we always enjoy Wits and Wagers when we play it. Next to the party, we played quite a few games of Where Words. This game plays in about five minutes. It's for ages eight and up and plays four to ten players. It's basically 20 questions with secret identities. You have the seer who knows what the magic word is and the werewolf who also knows what the magic word is. The seer is trying to lead people towards the word and the werewolf is trying to lead people away from the word. But if the seer is too obvious, the werewolf can find the seer and then the werewolf wins. It's an interesting twist to 20 questions and it's like a $12 game. Really fun. Next, on New Year's Eve, we played Secret Hitler. I've talked a lot about Secret Hitler on this channel. If you want to know more about it, go watch my video from Monday. I posted the top 10 games that we played last year in 2017, and we talked a lot about Secret Hitler. It's a really fun game, our most played game of last year with 54 plays. We got home from the party and played Mysterium. This game is for two to seven players ages 10 and up and plays in 42 minutes. I'm not sure why 42. I kind of wonder if that's a joke. It's about 45 minutes, I would say. In Mysterium, one person is the ghost, and they're silent and they cannot speak. And they're sending clues to the psychics so they can try and figure out how the murder happened and lay the ghost spirit to rest. The ghost and the psychics are all on the same team working cooperatively. Travis wanted me to 3D print this okay hand and then he used it in Mysterium to signal whether they correctly interpreted the dreams or not. God. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's a sex lab. <laughs> We also played Mysterium with the new Hidden Signs expansion that Alex got us for Christmas. Enjoyed adding in a bunch of new cards to it that helped mix the game up. We went to Breck over the weekend to do some snowboarding, and I got to try out my new Karma Grip, the stabilizer for the GoPro. Check it out and tell me if you think the videos on the mountain look a heck of a lot better instead of the shaky GoPro going down. Tell me what you think. <laughs> we're going snowboarding tomorrow at Breck, and we're hanging out in the hotel playing some Secret Hitler. I like hodls. <laughs> hodls? Hodor. Hodor. <laughs> Name that reference. They shut down all the lifts in the afternoon because it's so windy and several people are hiking up. So Travis and I decided to hike up the mountain. We made it to the top of Five Chair and we're gonna go down Springmire now. So dog. Which mission is this? Seven. Seven. We're not gonna win probably. All right, Brandon, go up. We played Exit the Game, The Abandoned Cabin. This is basically an escape the room game in a box. It's a one-time play. They run 15 bucks. Well, we just finished the Exit the Abandoned Cabin. What'd you guys think? It was really cool. Yeah, it was really cool. It was hard. Yeah, no, I'm yeah. telling you now. <laughs> it was difficult. We finished it just under two hours. Do you still think it deserved beating out Terraforming Mars for the Kenner Spiel des Jahres? No. Mm, I agree. I'm no. <laughs> we pulled out another puzzle this week, and this time it's actually board game related. <laughs> that doesn't go there. Where does that one go? What the heck? <laughs> Did we just get gypped on this puzzle? Wait, is there a hole that we're like not seeing? Yes. Oh. So, so we're filling the floor somewhere. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. 
Go ahead. Do the honors. <laughs> Yay! Yay! We pulled out zombie dice this week. This is about a $12 game, super cheap. It's just got a bunch of dice here that have footprints of people running away, shotguns for shooting zombies, and brains. If you're looking for a brainless game to play, this one is for you. Seriously, there's not much to it at all. You're rolling dice, it's mostly luck based. Don't expect one with strategy where you have much control over your destiny. It's a push your luck game, you choose to keep re-rolling or you can lock in your score. Kind of like Pass the Pigs or Farco if you've played those. Oh, and Zombie Dice is for two to 99 players. That's what it says. 10 to 20 minutes and ages 10 and up. For the board game news, we have a new number one on Board Game Geek. Gloomhaven passed up Pandemic Legacy Season 1 and claimed the number one spot on Board Game Geek. That's a pretty big accomplishment. So congratulations to the creators of Gloomhaven. That's pretty awesome. Next, Jamie Stegmeier from Stonemeyer Games announced the third and final expansion for Scythe, and it's called Scythe. The Rise of Fenris. This expansion sounds awesome. They just released the second one in December, and this one is not being released until Q3 of this year, so we've got a good eight, nine months to play the Wind Gambit before the next one comes out. The description of it sounds fascinating. Empires have risen and fallen in the aftermath of the Great War, and Europa stands on the precipice of a new era. The economy is robust, morale is high, and defenses are strong. There are reports from the countryside of strange soldiers with glowing eyes, but they seem distant and harmless. The final expansion to Scythe features an 8-game replayable campaign and 11 interchangeable modules. The story of Scythe continues and concludes with an 8-episode campaign. While the campaign includes surprises, unlocks, and persistent elements, it is fully resettable and replayable. So it sounds like it's a legacy type expansion, which I've never heard of before. This sounds fascinating. But you don't tear cards up, you don't put stickers on the board, it sounds like, because you can reset the whole thing and play the campaign again. Sounds amazing. And then 11 modules that are interchangeable to cater to players' preferences. While the exact nature of the episodes and modules will remain a mystery, some of the components are in secret tuck boxes, the components in this expansion include a detailed episodic guidebook, 13 plastic miniatures, 62 wooden tokens, two custom dice, five tiles, and a hundred plus cardboard tokens. So this sounds like a legit expansion that is almost like a new game. I'm really excited for this in Q3 of 2018. One more thing in the news, I backed a project on Kickstarter called Spirits of the Forest. It's cheap, it's only 14 bucks, but it's a beautiful looking game. It's basically card drafting and set collection, and it plays solo, which is interesting. A lot of games are playing solo nowadays. Cosmic Run, Race for the Galaxy with the first expansion, Terraforming Mars, Scythe, all have solo variants. And I'm wondering, is this a new trend in board gaming? Having a solo variant of the board game to play by yourself when you don't have anyone around to play with you. We'll have to keep an eye on the new games coming out, but uh, that's pretty interesting. That is it in this week in board games. Thanks for watching everyone. Subscribe for more board game videos and we'll see you next time. Bye. Seriously, how does the mic sound? Better?